Our next lecture today is going to be talking about a very interesting topic called multiple endocrineal pleasure. I remember when I was in medical school and they did taught us this lecture. I had no idea what they were talking about. I just wish they had just said, listen, a guy comes in and I found one, two out of this in their body, neoplastic syndrome. What other one is most likely is going to be there? That's all this topic is all about. It's basically saying if I can find two of these symptoms or two of these diseases in your body, hmm, I should be thinking there might be another one. You have to just be suspicious of it. That's it, guys. Well, let's dive into the party. So when they say multiple, there's more than one thing going on. Endocrine, all the endocrine organs are acting up and they have some kind of neoplastic process. That's it. That's all you need to know. So this is how they're going to test you. There's three good types. But before we start, I'm not going to tell you which one we're going to first talk about, but bear with me here. So we're going to take a patient case because I think if we have a patient case, you should be able to understand where we're coming from. So we're going to take a 35-year-old female. Okay. She came in to see our endocrinologist. And um, during the process, she came in and she's complaining, Doc, I have this chronic peptic ulcer disease that's been going on for years. Years. That's a five years of chronic peptic ulcer. She's been losing weight. She's been taking pantoprazole. So she's complaining of chronic peptic ulcer disease. Now, We've used a lot of PPIs for her, but she said it's not really helping. So somebody said, okay, we don't know what's causing, what else can be causing people to have chronic peptic ulcer? She says, I'm not on any NSAIDs right now. I'm like, okay, that's a good thing, you know? And she doesn't have H. pylori, so we'll knock that out. She does not have H. pylori bacteria that cause peptic ulcer disease. So I said, I wanna order a gastrin level on her. And I gave her a fasting gastrin level And it was very, 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 very hot. We did a secretin inhibitory test. And guess what? A gastric level was still elevated. So we said, voila, guess what, honey? You got Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Ah, well, that's good to know, which is a gastrinoma. So we found one thing. Well, then she said, oh, then I asked her, have you ever had any problems with your pituitary? She's like, yeah, I had a pituitary tumor resected four years ago. I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, I had a pituitary tumor one time. It was a prolactinoma. I'm like, you had a prolactinoma? She's like, yeah, you know, the doctor took it out, now I'm fine. So before she walks out of the office, I'm thinking in my head, or on the board exam, this is how they are going to ask you. She has Zonja Ellison syndrome, that's one thing we just diagnosed it. She has a pituitary tumor, what other tumor can she possibly have? So she had a pituitary tumor. That was one right there. That's our guy. Supposed to be a lady, but we're just gonna use that. All right. And she had a gastrinoma coming from her pancreas. A pancreatic tumor. So guess what? The only thing left is gonna be a parathyroid. She's gonna possibly even have another parathyroid hyperplasia right there. You know what? Let's draw the part, the thyroid gland and put them in there. So the third thing she's going to develop is a parathyroid hyperplasia. Now, this is not a cancer, it's just hyperplastic. Now, which means they might be having, you know, hyperparathyroidism, right? That's most likely what she's gonna have hyper PTH. So if I check our PTH levels, 
guess what? It's gonna be elevated. Now, we took all these three syndromes that has what? She had a pancreatic tumor, she had a pituitary tumor, and she had a what? A parathyroid tumor. We call them the three P's. And those three P's are called what? One syndrome called the first one we first found. We, find, we always find all these three in a certain amount of patients. So we call them multiple, which there's three of them, endocrine neoplasia type one. But you know who found it? It was Wehmers. Wehmers. Werner's, Werner's syndrome, actually that's not the guy that found it, I don't know who found it, but it's also called Werner's syndrome, so the way I remember is one, okay, it's men one, men one, Werner's, one, one, Werner's, one, Werner's, wait a minute, one, what, what, one, one, Werner's, 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 Werner's sound like one, one, Werner's syndrome, so if they want to trick you, they might just put Werner's syndrome, that's how you remember, it's M-E-N-1, Werner's Syndrome. Okay, that's how you remember it. So, what are the three P's? Now we got to write them out. This was supposed to be a case. So the three P's are one, a pituitary, right? Tumor, parathyroid, tumor, and last but not the least, a pancreatic tumor. See that? Pituitary, parathyroid, and pancreas. That's Werner's syndrome. That's how you remember that. Three Ps. Now, our lady, let's continue our story, has a sister. She finished college and she was very, very excited. And she said, I want to, I love public health. I just love public health. And I want to go get my master's in public health. So I'm like, that's a great idea because you know what? This is a familial syndrome. It's usually inherited condition, right? You inherit from somebody. And it's actually an autosomal dominance inheritance. That's how these people develop it. So her sister decided to go get an MPH. And let's see what happens. Our sister decided to come to my office again one day, not my office, into the endocrinologist's office and say, hmm, she, our sister is 32, she was 35. So when our sister came, our sister was a 32 year old, they were three years apart, came in and said, Doc, hmm, you know, my blood pressure has been out of control. They give me multiple medications I just, I just don't know. I get this palpitation. I get very, very sweaty. We're like, really? So, well, she did not have renal artery stenosis. So, and it's not an essential hypertension. So just to make sure she's fine, they did a CAT scan of her belly and they found a tumor on her pancreas. They called tumor of what? Chromaffin cells. She had a few chromo Cytoma. That's why our blood pressure is always 180 over 110. They can get a caution, they, they give a thiazides, right? They give, you know, beta blockers. Well, not really the best treatment. We sh they should like give a phenoxybenzamine, right? It's an alpha 1 blocker. Well, now that we found out she had fewer chromocytoma, we thought that was the end of the world. But, unfortunately, we had, she said, well, we ordered a calcium level and we noticed like a calcium level was really, really high. Elevated calcium. And what is the most, two common, most common thing of elevated of hypercalcemia? Hyperparathyroidism and cancer. These are the top two. I'm just give me the top two right now. So she did not have cancer, thank goodness. But she had hypercalcemia and her phosphate level was very low. So we decided to check a PTH level and PTH was sky high. Guess what she had? She had another hyperparathyroidism. We were like, wait a minute. You have hyperparathyroidism and you had a few chromocytoma? I'm a little bit worried for you. I'm very worried. 
because there might be another thing going on that if we don't pick it up, it might kill you. So we decided to check a thyroid and they did a biopsy. And guess what else she had? She had an underlying medullary thyroid carcinoma. So while she was trying to get her MP, oh, sorry, PH in graduate school, she actually been walking around with the MPH itself. She had a medullary thyroid carcinoma, which is the M. She had a field chromocytoma, and she had a hyperpyrothyroidism. It's great that she's getting a master's in public health. But guess what? Her sister had developed Werner syndrome. However, because she's getting a master's in public health, it's a great idea. She developed this syndrome and they call it, well, if your sister has the Werner's and she's type one, that is a type two. So we call it type two A syndrome. This is man two. Well, how do I remember the other name for men too? So, another name for men too is what? Simple syndrome. Now, this is, if you have a kid in the house, please close their ears. So I said, what two things in the body, right? What, there are two things in a woman's body that everybody's always looking at. That's with an ass, a nipple, nipple, I'm like nipple, simple, whipple, nipple. Wait a minute, two, there's two nipples and that goes by simple. Well, as nasty as it aside, we don't care because this is medicine, right? We just want to remember stuff. So 2A is two nipples, but it's not the nipple. You have to change that to simple. That's 2A. But remember, simple is a sister's name. That's how you remember. Simple has two nipples, and she went to get a master's in public health. You can't get nastier than this. However, Make sure you're only above 18 to be able to hear what I'm saying because this is not meant for the lighthearted. That's how you remember that man 2A. Because medullary chirocarcinoma is very, very nasty. You don't want them to have cancer of their thyroid gland. Now, because 100% of these patients are going to develop it. Now, we're not done. We're going to have to talk about their brother. They do have a brother, okay? Let's talk about their brother, because this is a very nice, beautiful family. And their brother is a 18-year-old male. Since we were worried that sister both have an autosomal dominant condition called multiple endocrine neoclasia, we were worried about their brother. Their brother came into my office, and this guy is a seven, three feet tall guy. Tall, lanky, skinny. I'm like, wow. That is dirt Novisky. Well, it wasn't dirt Novisky. So when he came in, he came in for a physical. When he came in, we checked his blood pressure, and his blood pressure was 220 over 100. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. I'm a little worried. You're 18 years old. You should not be having a blood pressure of 220 over 100. So we eventually did a workup, and guess what he had? He had a pheochromocytoma. Just exactly. It's like, you know, I get sweaty, diaphoretic, tachycardic, right? In the middle of the night, you know, my blood pressure is always elevated. I get headaches too, palpitations, tachycardic, because too much what? Epinephrine being shut out by the tumor in the adrenal gland. Well, we thought we were done. I told you the guy is tall. It's about 7'3". He had marfanoid habitus. That's what we call that. Okay? So, marfanoid habitus. Tall, lanky. They have marfan syndrome. Now, you would think we're done. We said, wait a minute, I want to do a physical exam. So I look into his mouth, and he has all these little nodules. They're called mucosal neuromas. 
So let's break that word into two. Mucosa is in any mucous membrane. It's in our body. Our nose has mucous membranes. Our mouth has mucous membrane, right? So when we look, and neuroma is a what? Tumor of nerves. So inside his mouth, if you look into his nasopharynx, I'm like, what is that stuff sticking out? Right? Nasopharynx, tumors, you look at oropharynx and the larynx. Now, inside the mouth, he's got all this little tumor kind of sticking out in his nose, right? This is, this is his nose, okay? And inside his mouth, he also has some like, at the back of his mouth, all this nerve tumor sticking out. Those are mucosal neuromas. Now, that's not gonna kill him, right? He has only mucosal neuromas. The guy's tall and lanky, and he's got pheochromocytoma. That is their brother right there. He's a very tall guy. Look at that. He's very skinny hands. So what should you be looking out for? Well, watch out for medullary thyroid carcinoma. That is what is the biggie. Medullary thyroid carcinoma. Okay, because that is bad. So we have to check that, do a biopsy, and you see it, you made a diagnosis of medullary thyroid carcinoma, but guess what? The only way you're gonna remember him is because, um, mm, well, he's the guy that has a lot of M's and a P. So how do I keep track of winners? The older sister, simple, with the nipple, which is 2A, and this is called man to be. Well, how do I remember him? Because he is the man to be. He's 18 years old, and he's also eventually gonna grow up to be a man one day. So he's man to be, right? He's a man to be. Because he's a man to be, he's gonna be a male, with morphinoid habitus, right? He got mucosal neuromas, medullary carcinoma. He's got all the three M's with just one P's. So the sister has three P's. He has two P's because parathyroid, right? And Fiel, and the brother only has one P. So Werner's has got three P's. Always remember, Werner's one, she's number one. She's the firstborn. Number two, Sipo, right? She's 2A. She's the lady with the masters in public health. Always remember that. By the time you get to their brother, who's 18, whose name happened to be, is a man to be. Okay? And that's how you remember. Three M's and one P. Marfanard, Paul and Lanky, right? He's got pheochromocytoma, mucosal neuromas. And that's how you remember it. They will give you two out of the syndromes and tell you to tell me what else are you gonna find. And that's how you memorize and understand multiple endocrine neoplasia. I hope you like this family of men, which are actually the Wetter's family, the Sipple, and a young guy who is a man to be. You know, one of them is getting an MPH. The first one has got three Ps walking around, and this is our last guy who's the youngest of them all. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.